Hey guys, welcome back to Asnes. Hope you're all doing well today. So here we are, episode 60. I can't believe it. Yeah, so a lot of great questions from a lot of great people again as per usual. So get comfortable guys, grab your drink and let's get stuck in. So first set of questions this week come from Stroop Waffle. So thank you very much, mate. And his first question. What is your favourite video game animal? Yoshi. <laughs> yeah, that's the easy option. He's a dinosaur. He's an animal. Technically not alive anymore, but yes, Yoshi. If you would wake up as the President of the United States, what would be the first three things that you would do? I would increase universal medical care and make sure that everybody is covered, no matter what, including existing ailments. I would be tougher on gun laws and restrict the amount of weapons you can have in your house as well as remove all assault rifles from homes because they're unnecessary. Thirdly, I'd do more for poverty. That would be an important thing to do. So those are my three. Do you believe in alien life and do you think these aliens would be more technologically advanced than us? And if so, do you think they would come in peace? I, it's not, I don't like to use the term believe in alien life because it makes it like a religious thing. It's not a belief or a faith, it's just a scientific fact that there's more than likely going to be life out there. All the planets and the galaxies that we've found so far, it's most likely we're not alone. If we are, there's a bigger question then as to why. But it wouldn't surprise me if they were to come down and visit us. But I do believe that if they do come and visit us, then that we need to reach a, t a certain point. Now, you could argue that it was after the atom bomb, which is why that we've seen so many sightings since then that they did come and visit us. You know, So I mean, there's always that possibility. Have you ever seen the Star Trek film First Contact? That will explain what I'm on about, really. I, it's, obviously, they're going to be more technologically advanced because they wouldn't be able to get here. They need... Depending on where they're coming from, they're not from any planets close to us in our galaxy because we've pretty much established there isn't any life on any of the planets. So therefore they're coming from further away, which means they need to somehow find a way to create a warp hole to do the, um, to do the Einstein-Rosen bridge and bend space, which is not an easy task. So you've got to be very technologically advanced to be able to even understand how to do that and actually physically make it work. So that's one thing. In terms of coming in peace, yes... You're going to get people like us. We have people who are good, we have people who are bad, people who are indifferent. It's going to be the same with other races as well. So there are going to, you don't know, it depends if there's more than one race of people out there or creatures or whatever they may be. We don't know how they've evolved because of their environment. So it depends on what planet they're coming from. They could be good, they could be evil, we don't know. My argument has always been that if Roswell is true, and the aliens did actually crash land in 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico. And they have been with us ever since the 47. And they do have aliens that visit now and again regularly. I don't know how it works. But if, it, if it's, say it was all true, then they obviously come in in peace. Either they're coming in peace or it's like men in black and we're able to shepherd them and control and not allow the, the, the violent ones to uh, infiltrate our society but you know I'll be absolutely honest and it's not conspiracy it's not lunacy I think at the end of the day it's quite logical to believe that there are there is a possibility of other life outside of our planet and for us to, to think we're the only life is very arrogant and I don't think that's the right way to go at all you know but yeah I definitely think there is life there's at least a possibility of it what TV shows are you currently watching and how would you rate them well it'd be hard to rate them because there's a lot it's a little bit less than usual because a lot of shows have gone off air. But off the top of my head at the moment, I've just come to the end of watching Odyssey, American Odyssey, which I would give a high rating. I'd probably, I don't know, score-wise, probably four out of five. Really good show. Not as good as Homeland, but still really good quality. Shame it's been cancelled. Rookie Blue I'm watching today, which is a show I've been watching for a few years now. It's a Canadian cop show. I love that show, so that's a nine. Or five, even. <laughs> Don't even know my own rating system. Yeah, I love that. Brilliant show. What else I'm watching? I started watching a show called Mr. Robot, which is interesting. I've only seen one episode. I've got two more to watch. Um, so I can't really rate that one yet. It's a bit early. What else have I got on at the moment? That's right. So a lot of shows have gone off air, unfortunately. Oh, Graceland has just come back, which is one of my favourites. It's a five out of five. I love that show. Fantastic show. 
So that's back for season three, it's just started. And what else have we been watching recently? Oh, actually on Channel 4 as well, unusually enough, there's a show on RTV that's actually good, which is uh, Humans, which is absolutely brilliant. I would, I'd give that a 4.5. That's a really solid show and unusual for the for the Channel 4 to have anything worth watching. But yeah, that is a cracking show. I definitely recommend Humans. Is there anything else? Let me see. So I've watched, I watch so many shows, it's hard to keep track sometimes of what I'm actually watching. What else have I got on at the moment? I can't think. It's very quiet at the moment. So a lot of shows have gone off in America, unfortunately. But those are the main ones I can think of. What is your favourite Avril Lavigne song? Oh man, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's, uh, oh shit. Oh my god, hang on. I think there. Oh. I'm going to have to look the album up and find out one second. Because it's just, I can hear the song in my head, but I, I can hear the lyrics, but I don't know what the song, I'm not going to sing it either. I just don't know what the song's called. Have a look if it works. Right, we'll get in the end. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. Won't be a minute. Just checking Wikipedia. Let me just grab the first album and I'll know what the track's called. Then uh, that was it, Let Go, isn't it? Well, ah, there it is. Right, there we go. That's only got five tracks, that's not right. Oh, what a bloody song called. That can't be right, because it hasn't got enough tracks on it. There were more tracks than five on the first album. One second. I know what to do. You caught me off guard with that question, mate. I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> of course, if my bloody tablet actually loads, I might get some. Uh... Yeah, it is what I thought. It's called I'm With You. That's the one. That's my favourite Avril Lavigne song. I absolutely adore that track. <laughs> get there eventually. Right, okay. Michael Jackson was rich, famous, and talented. Why do you think he had so many issues? Uh, he was abused by his father. He had too much fame, far too young, and never really got to live as an adult, and he was always in the mind of a child. So I think that's probably why. Real shame. You know, it's, it's tragic. A lot of child stars do tend to go a bit mad and go off the rails and into drugs and God knows what else, and it's a real tragedy. But, you know, at least he left us with some great music. What would you rather have? Unlimited love or unlimited money? Unlimited love everywhere, mate. Every time. Money's... You have to have it. You've got no choice. But if you could live without it and just have unlimited love from people, then obviously that's more important. Have you ever rejected a woman? Oh, Jesus. And if so, did you feel bad about it? Um, I'll say... <laughs> yeah, I have. And yeah, I did a little bit. It was a bit of a mixed one. At the time, it was sort of, it was the right thing to do, but it was also a bit harsh. And I, I can be quite blunt, unfortunately. I tend to just say what I think and don't really filter it. And so it probably came, came across quite harshly, but, you know, you live and learn. Do you think Capcom will ever make another great or even good game again? Yeah, there's always potential. I, obviously, Capcom and Konami are not as good as they used to be. Konami's getting out of the game now, anyway. Uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, I don't know, Capcom, you know, Resident Evil Revelations, from what I've seen of it, I've only played a little bit of it, the first one, and I thought it was really good, it was more traditional, so they can do it, it's whether they just apply themselves to making good games. Are you going to do a PS3 collection video? Well, if you click here, mate, you can check out my PS3 collection video, because I have actually posted it, so there you go. So thanks for the questions. Next, there's some questions from Muz, my good mate Murray, thank you. Uh, first question, I watched Blade Runner in a cinema lap this past weekend and it was awesome. What older films would you like to re-watch on the big screen? 
uh, Back to the Future trilogy because I only got to see two and three at the cinema and I'd love to see all three at the cinema that'd be fantastic T2 because I saw that at the cinema and it was just unreal I would love to go and see that again I'd love to see the original Die Hard it's not so much a rewatch, but a first watch because I've never seen that at the cinema I wasn't old enough so that would have been really cool to see that what else Jurassic Park as well I rewatched that on DVD recently and it was so good so I did actually see it at the cinema when it first came out. To go and watch that again would be a really great experience. What did you make of the recently released extended Uncharted 4 gameplay? Brilliant. I'm really impressed. I don't really understand why they didn't show it at E3. And also, if it's supposed to be behind closed doors, why well, they've actually released it now. Because they were saying that... I saw an interview with Bruce Straley and Neil Druckmann where Bruce said that there was spoilers in it. Which the only spoiler, and spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it, is that they, uh, Elena turns up at the end of the the the, uh, the clip, which was no big deal, really, I didn't think. I mean, it was pretty obvious they were going to bring her into it at some point. And I'm just glad they have, because I love Elena. You know, Nate and Elena's relationship is what makes those games so great for me. And the actual gameplay that I thought was just ridiculous. <laughs> if that's what it's going to be like, it's so over the top, and there's just so much going on. It was absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, it's just, you know reinvigorated my my love for the Uncharted series and it just makes me want to play Uncharted 4 it looks absolutely fantastic it's just a shame we've got to wait so bloody long but it's going to be worth it what would your porn star name be? maybe Pistol Pete nice I, I've got no idea mate I can't I, can't, I don't even know and that's something like your parents is it your, uh, your parents like your mum's I think porn stars take that does that like mum's uh, made a name and the, your first pet or some bullshit like that it? but I've never had a pet so I've I don't know yeah we'll go with pistol Pete why not <laughs> he shoots his scores yeah <laughs> you said you <laughs> you said you're watching Wimbledon but does it annoy you when idiots shout stuff out and when the BBC spends most of the matches cele- celebrity spotted it drives me crazy it depends. It does, I actually kind of like the atmosphere because I feel it's a little stiff sometimes and there's too much emphasis on the walls. And I was watching Nick Kyrgios the other day who was absolutely brilliant. And to see the, the the Aussie cheering team behind him every time was just fantastic. I also really like watching Nick Kyrgios play because he's just so... He's got so much flair and he just doesn't give a shit and it's like watching McEnroe. It's just great. I really enjoyed that. I do think that they're way too strict on the walls. A lot of sport nowadays... Not that I watch a lot of sport, but the sport, some sports that I do watch, like Wimbledon and occasionally you know, snooker, they've lost their way. They're too serious now. Back in the day when snooker was good, it was when you had all the personalities. You had Alex Higgins getting off his face on drink, and you know, they're smoking cigarettes and they were just chilling. That was when snooker was entertaining. You had really individual personalities. They should bring alcohol back to snooker. It was much more fun. It's too boring now. And Wimbledon, I love Wimbledon. And I actually like that the crowd get involved because otherwise it'd just be quite boring. It'd just be the sound of the racket and the ball. The only thing that irritates me about Wimbledon is Sharapova. I can't watch that woman play tennis. She drives me nuts. There is no need to make that much noise when hitting a ball. It's just, oh God, it's irritating. (laughs) Would you prefer to be a pirate, a cowboy or a spaceman? Mm. Spaceman. Because you get to explore. Because there's downsides of being a pirate and a, ca- a cowboy. Being a pirate is just not good because you're evil. And you're probably going to end up dead by one of your ex- one of your pirate mates. Cowboy's not good because cowboys took the land from the natives. So I don't want to be a cowboy. So yes, I'd be a spaceman if I go and explore the universe. Did you watch Canberra Green or Trumpton as a kid? I don't think I watched them regular. But I know of, of them. I think I may have like caught bits here and there, but I know what they are. I just never watched them regularly. Have you ever done a bungee jump? No, and I never will, Mommy. Not a chance. Uh, I am not someone who's brave enough to do something like that. I'm not diving off a bridge with a piece of rope strapped to my legs. Sod that. What's with all the retro remakes being announced this year? Mega Man, Shenmue, etc. Hey, fan service. That's all it is, really. They're just trying to keep us all happy. Uh, I'm up for it. I think it's great. Give us a black sequel. I'll be happy. So that's that's the one I want. Do you approve of topless sunbathing? Men or women? I'm assuming you mean women. <laughs> uh, yes, mate. Not a problem at all. Um, I was just going to say something then. I just stopped myself. That was really good. But yeah. 
oh, what the hell? I was going to say that obviously, you know, it depends on the woman. Um, if she's if she's quite large, then no. But if she's an attractive woman with a nice body, then of course, sexist it may be, but it's true. Is it pronounced Yoshi or Yoshi? <laughs> I don't care. I pronounce it Yoshi. I refuse to call it Yoshi because I just don't like the way it sounds. Um, it may be right the way to say it, Yoshi. I don't know. Don't really care. I'm never going to change my way. <laughs> right, thank you, Moe. Uh, next set of questions come from Scribble Sam. Cheers, mate. Do you have any Japanese friends who may or may not live in the, the part of England where you live? And if so, what do you think of what do they think of your collecting Super Famicom games? Do they find it weird or do they find it cool? I don't. I've got no Japanese friends at all, unfortunately. Uh, in terms of collecting Super Famicom, I don't have that anymore either. It's gone. So that that's a, a change. Do you think Japanese people would be interested in collecting PAL games? For some reason I doubt it, unless it's a PAL exclusive like Headhunter on the Dreamcast. But for some reason I can't see Japanese people collecting a complete PAL Super Nintendo collection. I would expect not only Japanese but anybody in NTSC regions including the Americans and Canadians would not want to collect PAL games except for exclusive games. Just like if I was collecting only PAL I'd only buy exclusive American and Japanese games. And as I buy American, well at least I will be buying American again. I will look into the possibility of exclusives from Japanese and PAL regions. Uh, this is obviously Jelly Boy on the Super Nintendo, which is a PAL exclusive, so that's one I'd like to try. But yeah, I don't think there's any... If, when you're in a 60 hertz region, there's no reason to, to actively buy 50 hertz games, unless you're like my mate Alex Blue Tonic 78 Of course, he's an expat, so he's nostalgic with the PAL games, so he imports the PAL games. Have you ever watched Game Center CX? It's a Japanese TV show about retro games. I haven't. I've heard about it, but I've never got around to watching it. Do you like playing pinball? I haven't for years, but yeah, it's alright. It's not too bad. It's not really my thing. I prefer electronic pinball on the on the consoles and the computers. Like Pinball Dreams and Fantasies on the Amiga, which is one of my favourite pinball games. Or Sonic Spinball, which is another one of my favourites. But actual pinball machines, yeah, they're quite decent. Better in a pub when you're drinking them. Do you like the song Pinball Wizard, sung by The Who and Elton John? If so, whose version of the song is better, The Who or Elton John? I didn't even know Elton John did a, a version of that song, so I'm going to have to pick The Who because it's the only version I know, and it's a great song. Have you seen the prototype PlayStation Super Nintendo Hybrid? Indeed I have, mate. Yes, uh, obviously I think most people know where that comes from. Uh, there seems to be a, lot, a bit of inf misinformation in some of the press because they seem to have forgotten the fact that when the deal was done with Sony and Nintendo, they didn't have a deal just to make a hybrid system. The deal was to make a CD unit that goes underneath the Super Famicom and then Sony managed to wrangle it so that they could have a hybrid system as well which would play Super Nintendo or Super Famicom cartridges and would also play new games on CD media. And then of course Nintendo screwed Sony over, went beyond their backs to Philips and you know the rest is history. But it was fascinating to see that it's come up and it looks authentic and I'm gonna go on record as saying I think it is real I hope it's real. The interesting thing is that I read in the Mirror online, which is a shit newspaper, but they were the only ones that reported that the guy found, apparently the guy found it a couple of years ago in the loft, and he said he hadn't powered it up yet, and it just needed a standard power lead. So I'm thinking, why would you not power that up? Apparently there's a cartridge and a CD with it as well, that we don't know what's on them. So if it was me, and I know what that is, or even if I didn't know what it was, I was interested... I'd be straight down the shop or going on eBay and buying a cheap power lead and plugging it in because they don't cost anything. So I find that a bit odd. That's the only part of the story I'm not sure about. Other than that, apparently his dad is needing money so he's probably going to sell it. I mean, you can't even put a price on that. It's priceless. I, I would say it's going to go for at least 100 grand, if not more, knowing collectors and people who've got the money out there. Because apparently, according to the Mirror as well, whether this is true, there were 30 prototypes made. This is the only one that's known of. So unless any of us come up now, that's a monopoly. He can ask whatever he wants for it. I mean, he'll probably just put it on auction and let it, let it run. But it wouldn't surprise me if it hit 100,000 plus. It's, it's a really, if you've got the money, it's a really great thing to have as part of history. And, uh, you know, it's a definite, a, a, a splitting point in history where the gaming industry could have gone a different direction. Yeah, Nintendo really made a big mistake there. They screwed that up. Right, thank you very much, mate. Okay, next questions are from Keith Hewitt. So, cheers, Keith. Uh, first question, which of the following activities would you choose and 
Would you, who would you prefer helps you to do it? Now, Keith, you've got to stop taking the piss with this because this is ridiculous. There's just, you cannot possibly expect me to read all of those people out. You've got to calm down a bit there, mate. <laughs> right, okay, activities. Uh, collect banana skins strewn around along a cart track. Pick your own strawberries. Wipe the floor of a Turkish bath centre. Lick the paws of a very angry lion while impersonating the voice of Michael Caine. Painting the Queen's toenails whilst di while discussing, disguising moderate flatulence as Tourette's. Designing the next U2 album cover to cover, include an image of your beard. Running around King Felipe of Spain's residence dressed as Princess Peach. Numbering the console generations in your videos. Sleeping with Alan Page, which is an impossibility unfortunately. Or playing Super Mario Kart for 24 hours while dang a point of a beer every hour without a loop break. And then there's like about 500 people to choose from. I'm not going to read them all out because it'll take too long. <laughs> Right, so which of the following activities would you choose and who would you prefer to help you? Uh, Activity-wise, so I'm going to sleep with Ellen Page, I don't care. I'm sure I could convince her. <laughs> uh, I need someone to help me convince her. Though. So who's going to be good out of that list? Jesus Christ, there's so many bleeding people to choose from. Oh my God. Kylie Minogue. I'm sure she could uh, have a word. So we'll go with her. <laughs> if the last video game character had to arrange a blind date for you with someone and then cook your food, how bad would the night be and what would be the menu? What was the last game? Have I even played any games either? I don't think I've played any games recently. I oh, know I was playing Crash Bandicoot the other day. Crash Bandicoot 3, so yeah, that'd be interesting. So Crash Bandicoot is arranging a blind date with somebody and... Then has to cook the food. Well, I think the, I think it'd be pretty shitty food. And I don't on the menu. I don't. You'd be lucky if you even got any food. Um, I'm just trying to think. There's no food in the game that I can remember. So yeah, I don't know. It wouldn't work out too well with Crash. You'd just be spinning around in the corner. Ellen Page or a lifetime supply of unlimited Amazon vouchers. Ellen Page. Are you able to complete these lyrics? I believe in miracles. <laughs> Where are you from? You sexy thing. You sexy thing. Oh Christ! Um, oh, that's the Carpenters, wasn't it? Was, was it? Why do birds? I think it's birds. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you, you're near? I think that's right. It's a long time ago. Yeah, that 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 bang bang song. I don't know the lyrics to that. I know the bang bang bit. And the last one. Do you think you're something off alone? Uh, no, I don't know that one. You're decorating the part of paint is teetering above your entire collection of games, consoles and accessories and Stevie Wonder tending to a small injured tortoise. Which one do you push it towards? Sod it, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> we can clean him afterwards. <laughs> You're at a gig on a lovely summer's night. The crowd are in good spirits. There was, this, there was due to be a cabaret show featuring impersonations, impersonators of Paul Gascoigne, Pingo and Stevie Wonder. But they've all, taken, but they've all been taken ill. The organisers demand that you and two other members of the crowd choose one of the people to impersonate as stand-ins for the ill actors. Who do you choose? Paul Gascoigne, Stevie Wonder or Pingo? Uh, Alright, we'll go with Paul Gascoigne. The Mallorcan Mafia, Mallorcan Mafia, whatever they're called, insist that you visit their island so they dis can discover what goes on in the game's, gamer's mind. They promise they won't hurt you or destroy your property and in return they will offer the sum of... Yeah, I can't... Jesus Christ. I can't even be asked to work that out. How much is that? Is that billion? I think that's billion, isn't it? Uh, no, in fact, it's probably a little bit more than that. I don't know. It's something like 192 billion, maybe a little bit more. I don't know. Maths is not my subject. For two days work in August, how do you react? Um, I don't know. I'll just... Yeah, I'll just go with it. Ever been tempted to start a collection of Palsner's games and console together with a keen bee beekeeping ethos? No, the bees aren't really a part of it, but no, I wouldn't collect PAL games. There's just no point. I don't like PAL games. If they're exclusives, then it's different, but for term for general PAL collecting, absolutely not, because it's 50 hertz, it's slow, it's got borders, and the games are far too expensive, and there's too many fake boxes knocking around these days, so I wouldn't even bother. As I've mentioned to you before, the real value we are getting from games is phenomenal these days. When you consider most 16-bit games cost around the same 
do you think one day the bubble will burst and game prices will suddenly rise? Well, 16-bit games, depending on adjusting for, for inflation, would be more expensive than games today. We're paying like 40 to 50 quid, whereas back in the day, you were paying like 90 quid for Street Fighter 2. So inflation would make that quite a high amount. So they're not really the same. I don't know. The bubble will burst with game prices uh, will suddenly rise. No, I don't think so. They'll just continue to be steady as they are. I mean, unless you're talking about retro, that's a totally different thing. I mean, that's just rising all the time, but current gen, no. Thanks for answering my questions. I'm sure to be in fits of laughter by now, as usual. I'm so confused by the Nintendo NX. I hear mixed reports saying it won't be a replacement for the Wii U, but more of a third to pillar. Take no notice of that, mate. They said that about the, uh, the D a DS. And the, when the Game Boy Advance Mini came out, the Micro, they said the same thing. It was also bullshit. It's marketing speak. We've heard that before. Do you think the NX will be a complete replacement of the Wii U with cross compatibility? It will be a, re a replacement for the Wii U, yes. It's the next console. Or will it be a third pillar? I am a little peeved because I love the Wii U and until recent months thought it would live until just before the PS5 and the Xbox 2. It's never going to live that long, Keith. Not a chance. It's already dead in the water. So it's going to live till 2017. Now, the rumours this week were that apparently they're gearing up to start production in October of this year to bring out the console next year, July, after E3, and it's going to be $150. I don't see that happening. I still think that it's going to be 2017 release. The price is an interesting thing. $150 is probably around about £80, £90, pounds, so there's no way in hell they're going for that price rate. It's far too low. It depends on the technology. Is it going to be a console that's a little bit more powerful than a Wii U, less powerful than an Xbox One or the PS4? They've already said they're not interested in power is fair enough or is it going to be on par with those systems or more powerful than those systems that's what's going to differentiate the price and if you come out in 2017 how much is it going to be for an xbox one and a ps4 are they going to be down to 200 pound each by 2017 in which case nintendo need to compete and 150 dollars would translate as 150 pounds because they're not going to do the the conversion they never bloody do or it might be even 180 because they might they sometimes like to put a bit extra on but i think if they came in at 200 quid in 2017 and depending on the power of the system i think they could do all right with that i'd be amazed if they bring it out in july next year because it just screams sega and the sega saturn and just completely misreading the market i don't see nintendo doing that i think nintendo have really learned and are starting to make waves with the mobile games they're going to be doing they're actually moving forward with that which is something i never expected them to do so they are changing their ways and looking at the industry and starting to really think about what they're doing so i think personally they're going to talk about it at e3 next year like they've already said like they said at e3 this year 2016 e3 will be when they talk about a new console it will be a new console that will take place of the wii u it'll probably come out in 2017 they will obviously support the wii u they've already said that that 3ds and the wii u it can be supported even when the new console comes out which is normal and to be expected you know, the PlayStation 2 was supported for years after the PS3 came out. So there's no reason why Nintendo can't support the Wii U for a good few years yet. But yes, it will definitely take its place. And it's hard to speculate because we don't know. There's a lot of rumours going around. Wait till 2016 E3. Then we'll get some facts. Then we can really judge it. <laughs> Cheers, Keith. Thanks for the question, mate. All right, next question is from Lord Mank. Thank you very much. First question. Which game have you been looking forward to and then getting let down uh, when you did. So which game was I looking forward to? And, we, and, then, and then it let me down when I got to play it. Ooh. I can't really think of one offhand. Probably, actually, probably Medal of Honor Warfighter was the one when that came out because it was br really badly broken. And right at the beginning of the game with a sniper mission, it was just impossible to get through it because it was just pure luck if the machine let you get through it because it, it was so off. You couldn't get headshots. You had to aim right above the heads to, to let the the, uh, the the console register it. It was just, oh, it was awful. So I was really pissed off over that. And also the fact that the beginning of the game was more like Battlefield than it was Medal of Honor. I've played it a lot more since then. And I've got a lot more love for it these days. But yeah, that one really pissed me off big time. I even made a video about it. What is the worst game you have ever owned in your game collection? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I find it really hard to find a game that I really absolutely hate and think was utter crap. You know, there's games that are bad that I just don't really get along with, but I've never really found a game that I think is absolutely awful. Not that I can think of, at least, anyway. No. 
So cheers for the question, mate. Next questions are from Nat Kennedy Breeze. Thank you, Nat. And first question. Two slides. One leads to Britney Spears and one leads to a guaranteed cure for a disease of your choosing. Which one do you choose? Well, as much as I love Britney Spears, you know, I've got to be humanitarian here and I'm going to pick the slide that cures cancer because that's the worst thing in the world. You know, obviously there's AIDS as well, but I can only pick one. Why does there need to be a modern version of everything? For example, with movies like Karate Kid and others. Uh, money. It's <laughs> simple. They can remake it and make a lot of money out of it. That's the only reason. That's all the studios, whether it's games, films, whatever it may be. That's all they see, cash. And, you know, I don't really have a problem with it because you've still got the original. You can still watch the original. You can still play the original. So if you don't like the new version, that's fine. Just don't bother with it. Have you ever listened to Power Metal like Halloween and Stradivarius? I haven't, mate. To be honest, I find, I'll be honest, all the different subgenres of metal confuse me. I never know what the hell's what. So, yeah, it's hard to know a lot of the time which one you're listening to. Have you ever quit a job that you hated at the time and came to regret it and remember the job fondly later on? I've never quit a job and regretted it. And I've only... How many jobs have I quitted in my life? In fact, I can only think of one job that I've quit in my life. And that was because it was shit and I hated it and it was a horrendous job. And that was packing coffee and handles when I was really young, when I first started out working. Man, that job sucked. I was there for like three days and I managed to get myself well in fact no I didn't quit I, I made sure I got fired yeah so yeah I got myself fired from that job by just taking the piss and being really slow deliberately slowing down because I couldn't stand it and then about a week later I got a job two doors up in a better factory so that was really good how would you feel if you were on a chat show with Britney Spears and the presenter showed a montage of you answering questions from your Q&A's about her fine by me mate I love Brittany, so I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> what is your favourite fizzy drink and tea brands? Fizzy drinks, Coke, pretty standard. I do like a bit of cherry Coke, it's always good. And occasionally some Sprite. I'm not a big fan of Pepsi, although Pepsi... Um, what's it called? Is it Zero? I think that's the one. No, Pepsi Max. That's the one. Pepsi Max is quite nice. But yeah, it still tastes like shit compared to Coke. Tea... It just depends on what's the cheapest at the time. <laughs> so, I mean, there are certain brands I don't like. I'm not a big fan of PG Tips. Tetley's okay. I really like Yorkshire tea, but it's really expensive, so I don't really buy that very often. That's a, an occasional treat. Uh, but generally, lately, I just buy the supermarket's own brands because they're just fine, and they're not that expensive either. They're usually cheaper than the main brands. So I've been drinking Morrison's, which is absolutely sound. Most overrated games are the three current consoles, one for each console. Christ. There ain't a lot of games to pick from that I've seen on the PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, Wii U, Mario Kart 8 is one. What else is there? <sighs> Jesus Christ. I can't think of three games for the Wii U that are overrated. Mario Kart, is the, Mario Kart 8 is the one that jumps to mind because everyone went so mad for it and I thought it was really overrated big time. PS4 and Xbox One... I there haven't been enough games really to say that about it. I don't think any of them are overrated at the moment. I mean, I haven't played that many. No, all the games I've played have been decent, so I can't really say there are any. So sorry about that, mate, but Mario Kart 8 is definitely overrated. Have you ever wanted to run a pub that does Doctor Who quiz nights? Uh, I would never run a pub. It's too much responsibility and a lot, you get lots of aggravation. So no, I would never do that. Doctor Who is great, though. I'll be in Western Supermare soon. Is the guy... <laughs> will you? You come all the way over here from New Zealand. Is the Cafe Gold really that good? Yes, mate. It's absolutely spot on. I've not been for a few weeks, but yes, the breakfast is the absolute nuts. Stevie Wonder, Pingu, Paul Gascoigne, Paul, Peter Capaldi, Barry Manilow, Diego Maradona, David Beckham, Jonathan Ross and Pucky O'Hare. If they all came out for dinner, what would you cook for everyone? I can't cook, so... <laughs> it's going to have to be takeout or something. So it's going to have to be like a Chinese... Or a pizza, or, or, or an Indian. In fact, you'll just get an Indian, because Indian's the best. <laughs> Cheers, Nat. Next question's from Craig Steelyard. Thank you, Craig. Uh, first question, what is the most overrated video game series you have played? Series. Final Fantasy. <laughs> have you played Kirby's Epic Yarn, and it is similar to Yoshi's Woolly World? I haven't, mate. I've still got a sealed copy up on the shelf there. 
I don't have the Wii's not out at the moment, it's boxed up, so at some point I need to sit down and play that. Are you going to show us your Blu-ray collection? Yes, I am absolutely going to do that. I'm just trying to find a way to do it, if I'm honest. It's just the logistics of trying to... Because I've got so many Blu-rays, it's how to do it and make it look good on camera, but I will do it. I'm definitely looking into finding a way to do that, so it will be coming to my channel. Do you read the Retro Gamer magazine? Not anymore. I used to read it regularly, and I used to have a subscription, but I haven't for like a few years now. It's a great magazine, I just can't afford to keep buying it. Have you watched the 40 minute Metal Gear Solid 5 gameplay? I haven't mate, no. I'm not a big fan of the Metal Gear series anymore so I don't really pay attention to what's coming out for it. Are you going to watch Terminator Genesis at the cinema? Yes, I saw it yesterday. I can't say any more than that for the time being but keep your eyes on my channel. In fact, tell you a lie, by the time this goes live it'll be tomorrow so you'll know my opinion on Terminator Genesis so <laughs> just realise what day it is. What is your favourite Rocky film? Mine is four. Mine too, mate. Number four is fantastic. I really like Rocky Balboa, though. I thought that was a fantastic sequel. But yeah, Ivan Drago, the best one. Do you download the free monthly games on Xbox Live? I wasn't aware there were any, mate, so I don't know. Is that a subscription service? I don't know. I don't really bother with the Xbox Live thing, to be honest. Are you going to start doing gaming walkthroughs and Let's Play videos? Let's Plays, yes. Walkthroughs is... Uh, not really something I'd be any good at but playthroughs and that I definitely want to do that on more gameplays it's going to take a while because I need to get the cash to buy a capture card and then I want to do proper playthroughs as well as normal gameplays as well why is it all humid here in the UK every summer I would love to know the answer to that question mate it's crap in it uh, I wouldn't mind if we got a bit of wind it's just heat it's just absolutely vile do you believe in Santa of course mate everybody believes in Father Christmas you know who else brings the presents how do you think they get there <laughs> should EA make another Road Rash absolutely right mate I think another Road Rash game would be brilliant uh, I don't know who's going to develop it but yes absolutely Road Rash should be made again for PS4 Xbox One I think it could be a really good game that could have you picked up any more new vinyl I've picked up um, one yeah <laughs> one record Ooh. so yes that's why I've not made a video yet uh, there are more that I want to pick up but no, it's going to take some cash to get them. But at the moment, yes, I have got one to show. And it isn't worth making a video about yet. Where do you go to buy your nice t-shirts? eBay. Uh, mostly eBay or Matalan. Because where I live, men's clothing stores don't really exist. There's Matalan and that's about it. So I get occasional t-shirts from there. So I don't really have a lot. The rest of the time, I just go online and buy from eBay. Do you think humans make the crop circles in fields or aliens? Well, hum humans do make the crop cells in circles in fields that's been proven aliens it's a little ridiculous to think they would because i think they've got more important things to worry about if they've flown all the way across the galaxy through a wormhole and they've landed in our atmosphere the last thing they're going to do is drop down and start drawing bloody patterns in the grass it just seems ridiculous that anyone would think that's logical um, yeah that's dumb to me that is but yes did you notice the dog wasn't barking in the last video thank god for that and all mate oh and craig's name is movies and games 007 uk by the way it's his youtube name so thank you Craig, cheers mate. So there you go guys, that's the last question. Thank you very much for everyone who asked me a question as per usual, really appreciate it. If you do have a question for me guys, please email it to me at uh, snestastic at outlook.com. Now, a bit of an announcement, I am actually gonna freshen up the format and change the way our SNES is done from now on. And the reason for this is just so that it gives me more time to make the videos and that way it can be regular and you guys will always get a new video. So we're now going to move from weekly videos to monthly videos. I'm going to make Asnes, I'm going to post it every first Friday of every month. And then that way it may give you time to ask more questions. And what I'm going to do is instead of just answering every single question that I get, I'm going to pick out questions to ask, answer in the, in the Q&A. And the reason for that is because that way I think it will give a lot more people a chance to ask questions. And it will give you a lot more variety of questions when I make it a bit more fresh. So I just want to change it up a little bit. And I hope you don't mind. I hope you enjoy that. But that's the format I want to go for from now on. So the first Friday of August will be the next episode of Ask SNES. So keep an eye out for that. As I say, if you do have a question for me, please email it to me at snestastic.outlook.com. And please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in August.